Hello everyone, I'm Marina and that's a Grumel School. Well, I wish nail technicians could only work with healthy nails and cuticles. But we mostly deal with extremely dry cuticles, like those you're about to see. My model has ruined her nails with disinfectants, so it's time for a nail transformation. Let's get into it. So here are the nails that I will be working on today. They have grown a lot. As you can see, the skin is really dry. This is a pretty common issue for those who use disinfectants having no gloves on. My model works in a hospital and constantly deals with disinfectants, so it's no wonder this happened. Now listen carefully. When it comes to doing the household chores, cleaning something with disinfectants, washing dishes or floors, please wear gloves. The type that I'm wearing. These are nitrile gloves. There are several types of gloves. Latex ones often come with talcum powder, which can dry the skin and cause an allergic reaction. I'm pretty sure you've met people with dry fingertips with deep and painful cracks caused by talcum powder. There are also thin vinyl gloves. They are less resistant to puncturing and tearing, so they can let the disinfectant in. They are just too thin. So I highly recommend you wear nitro gloves. I've been wearing them for years, and I've never had an allergic reaction. Some nail technicians find them uncomfortable. Well, I must admit that I can take either side here. Sure, they may be uncomfortable, but when we start working, they stretch, adjusting to our hands and getting more comfortable. We must wear them for safety reasons. You can find nitro gloves pretty much everywhere, offline and online. Just read the reviews first. Make sure that it's not a nitro vinyl blend. During the pandemic, the market was flooded with fake nitro gloves made of vinyl, which has caused serious damage. My model has naturally dry skin, so I'm going to do an e-file manicure. I'm using a blue flame drill bit to remove the pterygium and push the cuticle back. I gently lift the dry skin with the body of this drill bit to remove it with another one. When it comes to thin and sensitive cuticles, use a red flame drill bit. As for dry and thick cuticles, use a blue one instead. This is crucial for doing a clean and safe manicure. Using blue drill bits on sensitive skin may result in serious cuts and injuries. So I'm going to cut the cuticle with another blue drill bit but I'm being careful so as not to overfile it. Up close, this skin looks like parchment paper. It's dry and thin at the same time, so I should maintain a balance. It's about watching the client's reaction to cause them no discomfort. In case there are big hangnails or cuts like this one, just make sure to avoid them if they are still fresh. There is a big cut here. So, I just skip it and go on. We can get back to it and touch it up with the drill bit later. Now I have switched to a red drill bit to gently polish the nail folds and some of the tiny hangnails to prevent them from cracking. Let's remove leftover nail dust. Look at the skin on the knuckles. There are huge cracks, especially on the pinky finger. So, it's not just about nails and cuticles. One should take good care of their hands. The e-file technique did a great job. Now, let's touch up the lens. The index nail is too short. It has got the shortest nail bed. Now, you may be wondering how to file the free edge properly. If we just keep it as it is, well, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. But the index nail will still appear shorter than the ring one. Somehow we're supposed 
to even these two nails out, keeping them a bit shorter than the middle nail. It has got the longest nail bed. We can file it as short as possible, but we can't go any further than this particular nail bed. We can't make it as short as the one on the index nail. My model has admitted to actively using her hands in her daily routine, so I'm going to strengthen them with gel. I will be using this sheer milky gel with golden foil in it. It looks absolutely gorgeous and sheer enough to get a smooth transition from the cuticle zone. I put more gel on the free edge to file the natural nail out to get a beautiful C curve. Now I'm going to do a stone nail art on the ring nail. I'm sure you've come across it already, but let's recreate it. I have not strengthened this nail yet. I just dab some glittery gel on the tacky base coat and put shell pieces on top. I think they always look great, especially when encapsulated. I'm not going to use the previous milky gel to strengthen it, just a clear one instead. To smooth it all out and strengthen the nail plate so as to paint on top of it. You must have noticed that I have not shaped the nails yet. I will do it after strengthening to even out the length. Look at these cute little shells. Do you like my videos and want to learn more? Then join us and get access to Sacramel's knowledge base. More than 20 video courses for the price of one, including a certificate. Our courses are available worldwide. Read the description for details. Now it's time to file the nails. The index one is the shortest, so I slightly shape it first. I also touch up the surface with the nail file. Here's what I noticed filing the surface of the nails. Whenever I do this, it makes them slimmer and more defined, so they look more expensive. And clients can see the difference, so they are willing to pay more. It's not like we've used tons of gel to get that desirable highlight with no proper nail architecture. Now, this is the length that we should be guided by. To file the rest, the middle one should be a bit longer. But now, there's hardly any free edge left there, which leads us to another question. How are we supposed to file the nail out? As simple as that. Just pull the nail fold back and form a 45 degree angle with the drill bit. Now file the gel out. Keep the speed down so that in case you touch the skin, it's not going to hurt or burn. Just make sure to thin the edge down a little bit to make it appear slimmer. Now I outline it with gel paint using an angled brush, making random strokes. There is white gel paint on one side and a top coat on the other to paint a nice gradient. We can use a liquid base coat instead for a softer effect. Now I touch it up with a thin brush once I have cured the top coat. To imitate a stone surface. I'm in love with this nail art. Now I finish it off with a top coat. It's going to soften the lines and smooth it all out. These are our natural looking nails. Now let me know what you think. Let's sum it up. Please. Protect your hands with gloves, working with disinfectants and other chemicals. To keep your hands and nails beautiful. Wishing you all healthy nails. Good luck, guys. Bye-bye.